I'm Margaret, and this is my husband, Lottie. We had to quit van life when the pandemic hit, and now after three years of construction projects and renovations, we're just beginning full-time living in our new DIY camper van, traveling all throughout Europe. To follow along with this adventure, click the subscribe button to watch our new videos every Sunday. We have been jumping into the water at every chance we get in the mornings, in the evenings. Now Lottie is doing some exercising. We'll jump in again. Cold water brings something out in ya. And I mean, the backdrop doesn't help. It also saves us a lot of water on shower. <laughs> we don't need to do that at all. I like the challenge. It's better than coffee. That wakes yeah. you up. First thing in the morning was put on the bathing suit. As we embark on this camping adventure, here are some key facts about Switzerland. The country has no official capital, but its de facto capital is that of Bern. Not only is Switzerland located in the middle of Europe, but it's also in the middle of the Alps, making almost 60% of the country very mountainous and not ideal for living. That's why the majority of the Swiss population lives in the north, known as the Swiss Plateau. The Swiss flag features a white cross and a red background that symbolizes peace and freedom. If it looks familiar and has a striking similarity to that of the Red Cross, that's because Switzerland is the country where the Red Cross was established and is still headquartered today. Switzerland has four official languages, German, French, Italian, and Romanish. Each language is spoken in different regions of the country, and the entire country uses the Swiss franc for currency. Switzerland is home to some of the world's longest railway tunnels, including the Gotthard Base Tunnel. And also another fun fact for you is that Switzerland is not a member of the European Union. Instead, it maintains a series of bilateral agreements with the EU, allowing it to participate in some of the EU's policies and programs. It's a country known for its neutrality. Oh my glasses. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Oh. 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 I'm so We have a few errands to run first. We're heading to the grocery store. We need to drop off some trash, get some water, and then we also need to get a hose because we completely forgot one. This is also the first official testing of 3D printing while driving. We're going through tunnels, we're going up hills, we're going around corners. We'll see if the print survives. We were able to find a hose. Now we're filling up water. What are we at? We'll be half soon. It's never an issue with water. We just forgot hose, so we had to buy one. <laughs> and Lidl always covers our bags. No, it was Aldi. It's the same. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Waiting. It's pretty common these days to have motorized uh, gray water ball valve and we took it a little bit further. We installed camera with LED light. So every single time we're dumping, we can use any canal because we, without getting out of the camper van in a rainy days, we go straight on the top of the canal, drop it, and then as you sit inside of a camper van, wait for five to seven minutes, you know exactly <laughs> what is going on down there. And we love this feature. This van build took an unusually long time and uh, we're now in a phase of testing. It's awesome. We finally got there 
and I am happy that all of the building phase is now just a history that happened. My first feelings and first assumptions, I'm a technical guy, I'm always checking abs and checking the solar power, checking how much everything drains of a battery, how we're getting along with this power bank and solar. I was getting 800 watts, now I'm not, and now I'm 900. I don't think we need that crazy tilt today. But yeah, 950, 960. Look at that. We're at one kilowatt now, almost. Bang. Okay, then it's easy to get back, wow. I even captured charging with 1300 watts from the solar. That's crazy, these are 1000 watt solars and I didn't expect it would be more than 1000. I actually expected like 870 watts. So far the power bank and inverter seems to be like a overkill. I'm trying to find limits, it seems to be charged all the time, but we were just transitioning, right? We were not properly camping. So today we cook more. I'm charging and riding as much as I can to find the limits. I'm still draining 100 watts from the battery and the rest goes straight to the bike um, from the sun. Oh, also, we are actually running the 3D printer, so that's, the, that's taking 250. Yes, these are my only responsibilities these days. What a project. Oh, say hi to Margaret in the background. She's now editing, catching up with videos from the workshop. Hi, everybody. Say hi in the comments. <laughs> I like working here much more. Thank you very much. Right? Nice views. See? Now I just need to model some kind of a lock for this. But it's always something. Lottie went for a quick ride while I finished some work, and just as I was finishing, I met this incredible woman, Maddie, who's lived in the village for her whole life and has dozens of hobbies. From living here, she's met loads of wingsuit jumpers, especially who come to Wallenstadt to fly the crack. It looks absurd. Three, two, one, see ya. I hear him. I don't see. Oh, there he is. Wow. Nice. As an adrenaline junkie, I've always had a bit of a fantasy about jumping alongside these guys. It's a technical sport. It's brave. It's wild. It's beautiful and unique. But after talking with Maddie, the fantasy of it all sort of melted away and the reality sunk in as she shared about all of the friends that she's lost to this sport over the years almost a dozen this village is insanely beautiful and attracts a lot of tourists but it's also very small and so the locals know that she's friends with those who fly so often she's the one who's asked to make identifications her strength really impacted me because more than anything it was just this obvious lack of judgment that she has for people who are passionate about something so risky. She's hosting them, she's supporting them, she's transporting them, she's even dog sitting for these jumpers, some of whom she'd never met before. And she's doing it all for basically zero money while simultaneously being the one who's left with like heartbreak and devastation in the end of it. She is one of the 
biggest displays of selflessness that I've seen in a very long time. <laughs> Camper van is only half of the adventure. That part that takes us 1000 kilometers, 10 hours drive away to interesting, dense location. We want to see as much as possible, very quickly. And there is no better way than exploring locally on e-bikes. I'm just charging to the battery throughout the day from the solars and then take it out anytime to my bikes. <laughs> so I just have a connector that's only fused on the other side. I need to have a controller on and I plug it in and that's all I do. <laughs> the camper van is cumbersome that only gets us and creates a base like a charging dock for humans. That's how I see it. And with the solar and a power bank, it's been so far unlimited riding these sunny days. That's why we love van life so much and that's why we started uh, e-bike business. It's always been about a combination of a camper van with powerful e-bikes. If you would like to get one of these, go to mysuperebike.com. I didn't think we'd get a private beach today. Followed this cave to ruin. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> what? I did not expect the day to go like this at all. Never would have predicted. It is so hard to believe that this view is 10 hours from the workshop. Backyard. Absolutely wild. And we're not even that deep into the country itself. It's where Alps begin is enough. <laughs> <laughs> we see all over the map that there are these little icons on our Park for Night app that show that there's camping. But when you kind of dig into the details of these locations, they're really small or like a big van or an RV would really struggle to get up this incline. So it's really nice for us to, at least if we're parking lower, we can still like explore up onto the mountain with the bikes and not be so limited because the van, our van would not make it up at this altitude. We'd be, <laughs> we'd get stuck. Well, I would probably beg the brakes. Yeah, so the seriously burn them all down. Thought the love was metaphysical. If that was way before my soul touched you, the fairest star will never look into your eyes. It's definitely supernatural. Cause I'm indefinitely falling for you. Now I'm a satellite and I'm touching the sky. Where's the soap that's always back here? That's mounted on the wall there. I love it! That, that's awesome!
Oh.